To see the fully uncut version of this video, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. What's that? What's happening? My name is John Joe Lyons and today I'm here to present to you my review for High Tension aka Switchblade Romance. Written and directed by Alexander Aja, High Tension stars, all of these lot. Best friends Marie and Alex decide to spend a quiet weekend at Alex's parents secluded farmhouse. But on the night of their arrival, the girl's idyllic getaway turns into an endless night of horror. Let me tell you a little story. Many, many years ago, I was 16 in a cafe with my girlfriend at the time having breakfast. I'd been reading about this film that had just come out in France but didn't have a UK release date, high attention. Everything I'd heard about the film made it sound so perfect for me and I was just desperate to see it. But yeah, like I say, no UK release date and at the time, streaming online wasn't what it is now. So I just had to sit on my hands and wait. Then on this fateful warning, in walks in some woman selling pirated DVDs. So I take the folder off her, start flicking through and I remember it so clearly, turning that page to see high attention Attention sitting right there. Needless to say, I finished my food as quickly as possible and ran home to watch it. From that day forward, High Tension would end up being one of my favourite horror movies of all time and after re-watching it to do this review, I can say that that is still absolutely the case. I f***ing love this movie. I've got so much to say about it and I kind of want to leave it all until the analysis at the end, so let's not waste any more time. I'll never let anyone come between this horror movie and me ever again. This is High Tension. The movie begins with a woman in a hospital gown whispering to herself over and over, I won't let anyone come between us anymore. The camera pans up her back and we see her many scars and injuries. As we get to her head, a camera comes into view and the woman asks if they're recording. Cut to the woman, freshly cut and bleeding profusely as she runs through the woods in slow motion. She gets to a road and is barely missed by a car, but when the driver looks around, she's gone. <laughs> To the woman, Marie, waking up in a car uninjured. She asks the driver, her friend Alex, for a cigarette and then tells her about the dream she just had. C'était qui ce mec derrière toi? C'était pas un mec, je crois que c'était moi. Comme si je me courais après. Tu peux pas faire des rêves normaux comme tout le monde. Non. Alex says they shouldn't have gone out the night before as she feels like sh and then teases Marie for getting super drunk. Marie says it's Alex's fault for running off with a bloke for three hours. She says she hopes he was worth it and Alex smiles saying he was. They playfully trade insults until Marie gives up asking if there's anywhere to go out in the country. Alex says no and besides, they didn't come here to party, they came to study. Then they have a little sing song. <laughs> Aw, cute. I hope nothing punch the horrifying happens to these two. Nah. Nah, that'll be fine. Cut to Alex's mother and little brother Tom. Tom asks how long it'll be until Alex gets there and the mother says that she'll be there after he has his bath. He runs off and we cut to this guy, parked next to the nearby cornfield, getting h and loving it. Now that's a relationship, eh? All the benefits and none of the human interaction afterwards. I'm gonna have to rethink things here. Also, that head doesn't look very fresh, does it? I can't imagine it's very moist. Do you reckon he has to flip it over and spit in its mouth before he pops it on? And if I made this movie, I guarantee you that c would have been dripping out of her mouth as he drove away. Just a nice thick rope slushing out of her mush. And maybe out of the neck hole as well. Okay. Moving on. Cut to the sun setting and then to Marie driving. She wistfully glances over at the apparently sleeping Alex when she's told to keep her eyes on the road. Marie tells her she still has some makeup on and then we cut to them turning into a cornfield. They're having a conversation about Marie rejecting a man's advances when Alex suddenly tells her to stop the car. She says she saw someone and gets out of the car to go and look. Just to be clear, if I was Marie and you got out of the car, I would wish you the best of luck on f***ing 
on out of there. Marie pleads with Alex to come back and with no response she gets out and ventures into the cornfield. She searches for Alex calling out her name and then cursing her out when she hears the car engine start. Marie runs back to see Alex driving off. She chases the car as Alex laughs asking where's your sense of humour Marie and then the pair drive off. Cut to them arriving at the family home. They're greeted by Alex's father carrying Tom who says it's nice to meet Marie in person. They head inside and dad tells them that mum left some food in the oven before going to his office. They then head upstairs and Alex points out everyone's rooms before putting Tom to bed. As she does, we focus in on Marie as she watches and smiles. Eddie. Oops. No. That little look. It's subtle and I love it. The mum calls out for Alex, so she heads into her room telling Marie she'll be up in a minute. Cut to Marie going up to her room and having a look around. Cut to the pair having a cup of tea and talking about the man that Alex likes. The man she's into also already has a girlfriend. Alex then asks Marie when she's going to get with a bloke, but she just tells her to drop it again. Alex says she's scared and Marie says she's going for a smoke. Alex says she's going to bed and tells her not to stay up too late as they'll be getting up at 9am to study. They say their good nights and Marie tells Alex she's glad she finally met her family. Cut to the dad in his office switching out the light and Marie as she lights up. She sits on the swing and looks up at Alex in the shower. She watches for a moment and then we get this super interesting cut. Back inside, Marie locks up and turns out the lights, says goodnight to the dog and heads upstairs. She washes up, shuts her door. We then cut to Marie as she pops on some reggae and does the two knuckle shuffle. As she splits the ham. Plays a guitar solo, rides the water slide, pets the bunny, does the finger diddle, flicks her bean, tickles her taco, rolls her raisin, hangs out with Pamela Anderson, rubs one in, double clicks her mouse, porks her pie, punches her clown, strokes her cat and uses herself as a bowling ball. Thank you. Outside as we see the same truck from earlier approaching the house. Cut to Alex, the parents and Tom all asleep as the van pulls up. The dog realises something's wrong as Marie climaxes, hears the barking and squelches over to the window. Sorry. The driver starts ringing the doorbell over and over as the dad approaches and Marie creeps to another window to see what's happening. The killer enters and the dog tries to attack but gets dealt with. Dad then tries to crawl up the stairs but the killer pushes his head through the banister trapping the man. He then makes creative use of the chest of drawers and decapitates Dad spraying blood all over the hallway floor. Cut to Alex somehow still asleep, the river of blood and then to the mum as she pokes her head out to see what's happening. Tom asks what's the matter but his mum says it's fine and to go back to bed. The mum calls out for her husband as we cut to Marie getting closer to the stairs. The mum finds the body that used to be her husband and we get this lovely shot with the glare from the killer's van somewhat obscuring his face. The killer gets his straight razor ready and slowly walks toward the woman. Cut upstairs as the mum screams and Marie hides in her room. She spots a phone and grabs it, searching the room for a plug. She sees something behind the wardrobe and struggles to get it out the way. Cut to the killer heading up to her room. Marie then quickly wraps the phone up, hides her stuff, makes the bed and cleans the bathroom, hoping to hide any sign she's there. She rips open the shower curtain just as the killer gets to the door. We then watch as the killer goes through the room meticulously searching, checking the radiator for heat, checking the tap for water, the medicine cabinet, the shower, and even under the bed, narrowly missing Marie. High tension indeed, good lord. He goes to leave but stops and turns back into the room for a moment. Then, apparently satisfied, he exits and we get this shot as the killer waits to see if he hears anyone who might have been hiding inside. Super f 
fucking creepy, man. Cut to Alex getting her hair felt up by the killer. She wakes up and sees the absolute worst sight you could ever imagine. <laughs> Cut to Marie hearing Alex's screams. She remembers the phone and then goes back to moving the wardrobe. When she gets it out of the way, however, she sees it's just a TV plug. In despair, Marie has no other choice but to venture further into the house. We also see here that when the killer went back into the room, he did so to cut the eye out of this doll's face. In the parents' room, Marie finds a cordless phone receiver, but not the actual phone, and so frantically searches the room, finding nothing. She then hears someone coming back to the room and hides in the closet. Metaphor! We see the mother, still alive, crawl into the room and immediately find the phone, but as she does, she's joined by the killer, who makes sure she won't be calling anyone anytime soon. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the best practical slit throat you will ever see. <sighs> <laughs> Look at that sh it's like a Muppet's mouth. And then the killer goes to work. <laughs> Finished, he stands, wiping off his blade and leaves. Marie has a little cry and we see what's left of the mum on the floor looking dead as f Marie goes for the phone, but only gets static on the line, then hears a noise and looks out into the hall as Tom goes running by and the killer stalks after him. She then creeps into Alex's room to find her restraint. She hugs the obviously distraught Alex and tries to free her with no success when they both hear Tom calling out for his mum. Marie goes to the window in time to see Tom run into the cornfield as the killer grabs his rifle from the van. A shot rings out and everything goes silent. <laughs> Alex starts screaming and Marie tries to calm her down asking where another phone is. She tells her she's gonna go and check and see if there's someone in the house and heads downstairs finding the dad. She skips into the kitchen avoiding the killer and then finds the phone lines have been cut. She then watches from the shadows as the killer carries Alex out and pops her in the van. Marie grabs a knife as the killer takes one last look around the kitchen. Marie evades him, creeping around the outside of the house and making her way to the van. We see the killer pick up a family picture and cut Alex's face out of it. Marie then gets to the van and jumps in with Alex. She then gets ready to end this killer's reign of terror for good. <laughs> well, f The killer then drives off with both women as we cut around the house and see all the carnage left behind. Cut to the killer popping on the radio as Marie tries to break them out of the van and Alex cries. Marie tries to get her to calm down but she won't listen. Marie promises they're gonna get out of this when they both notice all the blood on the walls. Marie says it's different because they were alone and then we see the killer add Alex's picture to his collection. We then see the killer smile. He sips some jack as Marie manages to unlock the door. Cut to the van pulling into this gas station. He starts filling up when Marie realises where they are. She gives Alex the knife saying it's for in case she doesn't come back and then creeps out and runs into the store just managing to miss the eye line of the killer. She tells the clerk to call the police and hides as the killer enters. The killer and the clerk know each other and have some small talk with the killer asking if he ever brings girls in here on slow nights. The killer tries on some glasses when the clerk notices his hands are bloody. The clerk looks at his gun but is then asked to go and get some J&B. The killer then spooks him asking for Campbell's instead. <laughs> Nice knowing you, Jimbo. We notice the CCTV camera recording the whole thing as the killer cuts the lights. He grabs the axe again as Marie ninjas about the place trying to get out. The killer searches the store, wondering what Jimmy was looking at as Marie hides in a bathroom stall. The killer then enters and starts looking through them one by one. So much tension! Finding nothing in the ladies, he goes over to the man's and takes a pic then leaves. Marie then creeps out of the stall. <sighs> she
She washes her head and hears the van start leaving. She then calls the police, reporting the crime, picks up the clerk's gun, grabs his car keys and sets off in pursuit. And then we get this lovely little section as Marie gives chase set to newborn by Muse. I can't play it obviously, but the music fits the film perfectly and it's one of the elements that I always remembered from seeing it back in the day. And at this bit, we also see the killer pouring liquor onto Alex's face, then holding a match above her. <laughs> Guys, all right, wind up this bloke, innit, eh? The killer turns off into a side road and Marie drives past trying to act all clever like, then reverses back and continues to follow him. We see Alex in the back holding her knife and then Marie as she loses sight of the killer. She continues forward when the killer's van appears behind her and rams her car. Marie draws for the gun, but it's then we see the killer dropping bullets out of his window. Well, double f A car chase then ensues with the killer trying to force Marie off the road. He succeeds with the car tumbling into the woods. Marie manages to pull herself free of the wreckage all battered to f and then heads to some nearby greenhouses. She wraps her wound when a torchlight comes into view, causing her to flee into the brush. We get this intense scene where the killer searches for Marie and it's another edge of your seat balanced on a puckered butthole sequence. Marie grabs a bit of wood and wraps it in barbed wire just as my arousal peaks and then starts hunting the hunter. She goes toward the torchlight and realizes too late it's hanging by a string. Clever girl. The killer then suffocates Marie and drops her to the floor as she briefly passes out. He gets in close, sliding his blade up her belly into her neck as she catches her breath. He asks why she cares so much about Alex. If she turns her on and tells her, she turns him on too and then jams his mucky fingers into her mouth. That's when Marie cracks him right in the f***ing head with a rock. She then stands and goes to f***ing town on him with the barbed wire back. <laughs> Yes! F*** him up, Marie! Every hit for me is just another orgasm. I'm gonna be a mess by the end of this scene. Alright, enough. Enough, Marie, yeah? I can't take anymore. She pulls the plastic away to check the mess underneath and see if he's still breathing when he comes back to life. Marie suffocates the killer, ending his life once and for all. She then screams the scream of the victorious warrior. <laughs> Cut to the police arriving at the gas station. The detective finds Jimmy's body and then heads over to the CCTV, rewinding it to when the incident occurred. And that's when we see this. What? Now I know what some of you were thinking, John Joe, that doesn't make any f***ing sense. Well, it does. It makes total sense. I'll explain. Let's just get the movie over with and I'll explain. Marie stares at the camera and we cut back to the van as she opens the door. She jumps in telling Alex it's over, all smiles as Alex freaks out. She unlocks the chains as Alex draws for the knife. <laughs> Alex screams it doesn't make sense, but Marie tries to calm her down. They get out of the van as Marie says it's finished, he's dead, and we see flashes of Marie committing all the murders. Alex then slashes Marie's face and shoves the knife deep into her guts. She runs off and we cut back to the killer as he removes the blade. He pulls a giant circular saw out of the front seat and tells Alex she's gonna pay. And here's another thing that I love. Cutting between the killer and Marie and then both saying the same line with the inflection slightly different. <laughs> Also, the camera work and the editing here, it's just oh, so good. So f***ing good. Alex gets to the road and is nearly hit by a car, the same car from Marie's dream. She then bangs on the window asking for help as Marie's saw can be heard approaching. She gets in and the man tries to get the car going, but thankfully for us, it won't start. The killer then shoves the saw right through the windscreen and cuts the driver to s***. <laughs>
The killer then starts tormenting Alex, breaking the windows of the car when we see she's escaped and is crawling down the road, a huge bit of glass in her foot. She pulls it out as the killer approaches and we see the crowbar next to her. He asks if she loves him, waving the saw in her face and she cries out that she does. He then drops the saw and Marie gets up close to her face, kissing her. Alex starts to kiss back, then shoves the crowbar right through her chest. <laughs> Marie starts to whisper that opening line and we cut to some time later at the hospital from the start. On the other side of the mirrored glass, Alex asks the doctor if they're sure Marie can't see her when she stops rocking and smiles. The end. I f love this movie. Forget what I said last week. Like, this is the best one. Oh, and yeah, you better believe I've got a pitch for the sequel. High Tension is a fantastic horror roller coaster that not only offers great performances, brutal gore, and high production value, but also does it in a fresh and inventive way. Flipping the usual killer in the shadows trope and giving us a final girl who actively hunts the antagonist. I remember when I first heard about this film, that was the selling point for me, and to this day, it's a quality that I still really appreciate. The performances from all three leads are also great. As with Sarah last week, Mei Wen plays Alex so well, spending almost the entire film crying and screaming, and while that doesn't offer her much range for the character, she keeps her anguish at such a high level it truly must have been exhausting. Cecile de France is fantastic as Marie. She has so much to do here, going from helpless to Avenger and eventually Psycho, and each stage is realised to perfection. I love her hunting the killer and when she snaps, beating him to death with that bit of wood, I truly fell in love. Her eventual turn to a crazed killer at the end is also perfect, seemingly switching from a character we've been rooting for to someone to be terrified of. She's the star of the show and I love loved every second with her. Then finally, there's the killer played by Felipe Naon. This guy is such an imposing force who manages to be a slasher worthy of joining the ranks of Michael and Jason while not going too over the top. It's his silence, subtle movements and breathing that makes him so uncomfortable, let alone the fact that the man clearly enjoys his work. It's so hard to make a new killer that fits that mould and Alexander Aja really smashes it in that department. As per usual, one of the things I enjoy with this story is its simplicity. One friend trying to save another who's been kidnapped. Set that story over over the course of one night and you've got my attention. But the thing that I love the most about this movie is the thing that you most likely hate. The ending. I've heard a lot of complaints over the years saying that the twist at the end doesn't make sense, but I really don't understand why. What we have here is a fight club situation where she's imagining she's watching someone else commit the crimes and it's only really her when she's interacting with others. If you view it this way, it makes all of Marie's interactions with Alex all the more entertaining. The wide-eyed bewilderment seen on Alex is the utter confusion of Marie leaving the room one way and returning another. When the mother's dying and she asks Marie why, she's genuinely asking her why she's done this, and I think that this twist gives the film major rewatchability. Honestly, go back through the review with this new context and you'll see how well it all fits together. The only thing I have questions about is where the van came from, but you could go as far as to say that actually Marie and Alex's entire relationship is fabricated in Marie's head. That it's her van and she stalked Alex to her parents' house to kidnap her. That Marie is a serial killer and Alex is one of many victims who have gone through similar journeys. I understand that you have to do a lot of narrative leaps to make it work and I also understand why some of you might not want to do that. That maybe it's a bit too far. But for me, I'm completely fine with doing what I can to make this work. Everything up until that point is so good, and if I've got to do a bit of work at the end to tie things up, I'm fine with that. I know I said it makes total sense, and maybe it doesn't, but I love it anyway. In terms of the gore, we get some great stuff here with the decapitation, the throat slashing, and all the damage that Marie takes, not to mention the barbed wire beating. I would have liked to have a few more victims, but it doesn't hurt the film too much when the level of tension is this high throughout. The stalking scenes of the killer searching for Marie are also intense, you wouldn't be judged for finding yourself holding your breath at certain points. It really lives up to the title. In that regard. Also, the presentation is top tier. It's another debut feature like last week, but I'd forgotten just how cinematic the whole thing looks. They really get everything they can out of the locations, and overall, it just looks so impressive. And that editing in the final act. Bravo. All in all, I love High Tension. It's as exciting as it is terrifying and has a level of professionalism behind every aspect that is truly awe-inspiring. It's no surprise that Alexander Arja went on to have a great career and I can't wait to see him one day return to the slasher genre. So that was my review for High Tension, one of my all-time favourite horror films. What do you lot think? I really do have a f***ing solid pitch for the sequel. I can't say it here because, who knows, it actually might happen one day. But I'll just say that Alex and Marie both return as does the killer and all of his violence.
Speaking of which, if you want to see all that violence and gore completely uncut and early, head to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. There we got all the uncut videos that have come out recently, plus I'm going back and re-editing all the old ones that don't have uncut versions. Slaughtered Vomit Dolls, anyone? I also do Patreon exclusive videos with an exclusive review video coming to Patreon this week. It's going to be for Flesh Meat Dolls, and if you haven't heard of that film, you f***ing will soon. Underneath, you can see all the names of all the channel supporters. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for everything you do for the channel. So yeah, like I say, if you want to see all of that cool sh head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons for as little as a dollar a month. You can pledge more if you want, and it really helps to keep me locked up in this facility. You don't, you don't want me out, out there. I promised myself that I'd stop announcing what I'm going to do next because I always inevitably change my mind, but we're going to be sticking with the French movies. Probably the most famous one, the one that everyone talks about as being the benchmark of new French extremity, unless I change my mind. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. My name's John Joe Lyons and oh, sh uh, something about your mum, sex and a river of c Sorry, I, I completely forgot. No!